when we talk about genetics, we want to look at your genes. So how do we look at somebody's genes? So there is a real nice test out right now, if anybody has had this done. It's called the 23andMe. Has anybody run their 23andMe test? Just a few people. After today, there'll probably be a whole bunch more people running it if I do a good job. Now understand, I don't make any money if you run the 23andMe test. You go to 23andMe.com and there's instructions on our website. So on my website, I have tabs across the top and there's a tab that says genetic testing. I actually have a video under that tab telling you how to go to 23andMe and order your genetic test. So uh, 23andMe is simply a lab. They'll send you a kit. You have a, it's a saliva sample. You can do it at home. They have excellent instructions. You register your kit. You spit in this tube. You send it back to them. And they'll send you an email saying, thank you, we got your kit. We'll let you know when your test comes back in. When you get the results back from them, they'll give you all this nice fluffy data that you're 12% Germanic and 6% Norwegian and oh, I didn't know I had any French in me, but this is, I don't care about any of that stuff. So what we need to see is your raw data. So we take, we, I mean me, I take your raw data and look at that and put it into a program and that's what we're going to be talking about today. You won't be able to see any of this information that I'm talking to you about uh, from your 23andMe yourself as a lay person. Um, you have to go to a doctor that's going to extrapolate the raw data. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Does that help? All right, so that's how we look at your genetics. Last time I was here, I believe we talked a little bit about gut health. And the genetics tell us a bigger story about your gut. So our software that we put your gene profile in, and remember genetics, your 23andMe is running thousands of different genes, takes those genes and separates them into components that affect different parts of your body. So the first section that we talk about when we look at your genes is the health of your gut. Now is the health of your gut really important? Yes. yes. And understand, I see a lot of cancer and Lyme patients and many times they'll ask that question, what does my gut have to do with my breast cancer? I don't have any digestive problems. What does this have to do with anything? And my answer back is, really, the health of your gut, you could, you could argue that many diseases, matter of fact, you could probably argue that most diseases can begin with the gut. So by the gut, we're talking about your stomach and your intestinal tract. So we really do need to look at the gut. And there's some genetic pictures that help us look at the gut. So our first section when we look at your 23andMe profile, when we look at your genetic profile, are those genes that affect your gut. Now understand, when we look at your genes, these are your genes. You were born with them. They're not gonna change, typically. So when we run a, we're not gonna run another 23andMe pro profile in a year to see if your genes change, because they won't change. So you get your genes, one allele from your mother and one allele from your father. And then that is what you have inherited. Now there is uh, what are called epigenetic defects. An epigenetic defect can be a de defect in a gene due to environmental influences. An epigenetic defect. You're actually taking notes? <laughs> So an epigenetic defect is a defect that happens because of environmental influences. I work in an ammunition plant and I'm working with mercury and aluminum all day long. It can affect my genes. So I can have a defect on my genes because of environmental influence. I worked in Chernobyl for a year measuring radiation and it affected my genes. Follow me? So I, I once had a patient who um, was from Russia. 
and her gene profile, she actually did not have cancer, but her gene profile was the worst I've ever seen. And I said, oh, I want to do a study on you because this is really interesting. Um, this is the worst I've ever seen. He, she had more double allele defects, meaning a defect from both parents, uh, than I've ever seen. I said, what was your history? She had been in the United States for 30 years or something like that. Well, her father actually had cancer twice, and her father was the head of an agricultural big giant industrial farm in Russia, and his whole responsibility was mixing the chemicals. So I said, oh my gosh, I would just love, and her, her father, I believe, was deceased, and her grandparents were deceased, but I would have loved to see a genetic profile on her grandparents that, that, that lived prior to this exposure, and then her father, and then her, and her siblings as a study. Now understand, this availability of these gene profiles has only been in the last few years, so we don't have necessarily that ability and her parents are now deceased, but it would have been really interesting. I would have put money on, on her grandparents not having those same gene defects. So in a sense, chemical exposure, radiation exposure, et cetera, et cetera, that's affecting our genes, including medications, vaccinations, et cetera, we are, we are damaging our gene pool uh, as a species. It's pretty sad, especially when you look at as many gene profiles that I, as I do, it's like, oh man. So uh, uh, there are some of these gene, genes that we're going to look at that you can have an influence on nutritionally, especially the ones when we're talking about the gut, there's, there's much nutritional influence that you can have on these. Some you could use specific nutrients. That can, that can help push those gene pathways that have defects on it. And some are dietary, some are lifestyle changes, some are easier to affect than others. Some are not very easy to affect at all. And that's what makes it sad. So uh, unfortunately we live in a fallen world and there's more chemicals that we're exposed to on a daily basis, even if you're trying to eat organic and do everything right. Uh, but the fact exists that you're still exposed to just enormous amount of stuff no matter how hard you're trying to be healthy.